Well, hello there. I haven't noticed you come in. So as you may already know by the name of the video, this is an episode about Outlandish Curiosity, the book that we work on with the writer Kevin Folk. And today I wanted to go through maybe two, three pages, detailing them a little bit, like rendering them further from that doodle stage that we've talked about in the previous episode in the Outlandish Curiosity playlist. And if that's not enough for the greatest video, I decided to also spice it up by making the whole process a bit more casual and free. On this channel I always try to show you guys how not to just become a better artist, but also how to make your life easier, how to avoid painting details that you don't know, how to think properly about your work. But today I also decided to show you how you can apply the mobile technology to paint the way every freelancer artist imagines his work, but never really has it that way. So right now I'm sitting on my couch, chilling, having a cup of joe, this is actually a lemon tea with stevia because I'm a European weirdo. I have my iPad in my hands and as you can see I removed the cover from it. And this is a little something I want to mention by the way. I like taking it out of the cover because it becomes like two times lighter and just much nicer to hold in your hands. I think when you're sitting on a couch at home you're not really supposed to be afraid to drop it and break everything. So that's one thing about the cover. It's sitting right here and I'm working with the tablet as is. I'm also spitting all over it. And another thing that you will never be able to tell in the video is the fact that I'm actually not using the protective glass anymore. And there's a reason for that. Brad Colbo, a good reviewer on YouTube, he made a great episode trying out different kinds of glass for protecting your iPad Pro and was testing how it works with the Apple Pencil. What was surprising for me, not every screen protection works really well for the Apple Pencil. This thing is really dependable on the distance between the glass and the tip of the pencil to the point where if you're using 0.4 millimeter glass on your screen you will have wiggly lines when you draw it kind of messes up the mapping of it or something so I also tried 0.3.26 glass I'm not sure that was true because when it was delivered it had no boxing or anything nothing was reassuring me about the fact that this was actually that thin of a protective glass and it felt kind of thick. I don't know. The point is that it's really hard to find a good protective glass that would work with Apple Pencil. So after two protective glasses, I was pissed enough with the whole wiggly situation that I decided to switch to just a simple film. It's a lot harder to put it on and avoid bubbles all over the screen, but it's gonna protect your screen from the scratches and with Apple Pencil that's a thing that very much is gonna happen if you're not using any protection on the screen. Obviously it's not gonna save your iPad from the drop, but on Honestly, do we really believe that any kind of extra thin layer of glass is gonna protect your iPad from the fall on the ground? I don't think it's gonna work. And the film appeared to be 0.1 millimeter, which is really thin. It worked out really well, like I don't notice any wiggles. I think very tiny ones still are here. I mean, I can see that the wiggle is not natural, like it may be not from my hand sometimes and it repeats at the same place, but it's actually so tiny that you're not gonna be drawing any kind of detail that is smaller than that wiggle, like it's not gonna affect you. With the glass, there's a pretty bad wobbles in the lines that really affect the drawing experience. So that said, let's actually start. And we're looking right now at this majestic landscape that our main character Gilbert is witnessing standing on the bridge. This bridge has a name, which I don't remember at the moment because I don't have the text in front of me, what I do have is a lot of doodles that I prepared before, so I could colorize them one by one. Now, this one is almost ready, at least for this stage of work. I kind of dropped them midway after applying some detail to them. So let's switch to a different page. Right here we can see Gilbert checking out some unusual plants on the wall of this mountain. And these plants are spreading around, they're like spitting out these oddly looking white seeds that are flying around. And they are creating these white clouds everywhere. This is actually the huge amount of these seeds all over the place. Why? Because they are males. <laughs> Which is true. And they are spreading the seeds that will be caught with uh, baskets of these females of spring follies which is the name of the plant. 
So I'm thinking let's actually work on this field shot and let's get rid of this landscape view because that was just for the impressive intro. Field shot, then Gilbert looking with his uh, monocular at the plants and then he's being scared by a giant flying thing that gets into his view and then he realizes that this was this tiny butterfly that has something to do with the whole spring folly reproductive system. So yeah, that's like the next stage of those white seeds. So knowing all that, let's start with the field. It's already in somewhat of a decent level of detail, but a bit too artsy, I would say. We need some real hardcore details applied to the thing, so it would look actually interesting and immersive. We can see this was the actual, the colorized doodle stage, and the actual doodle implies this level of detail right here. So after this stage, I added some details, and then I decided to create some variation of lighting from the cloud because the previous stage felt a bit too flat, you know, everything is just perfectly yellow, bright, and this looks a lot more interesting. So let's merge that down on the previous stage, and yeah, let's work a little bit with the clouds. What I want to do right now, I want to add a bit more details on this area, because it feels really flat. Well, I just left it for now, for then, to keep working on later. This is a good way to keep everything, you know. If I will forget about it, it's not gonna be a disaster, and it's also very easy to add anything on top because I'm gonna just grab any kind of color like this and I'm just gonna be adding like silhouettes pretty much. At a certain distance you switch from the whole light and shadow rendering to just silhouettes because objects at a big distance they mostly appear like just their main color and you should really keep that in mind while working otherwise your whole landscape will break into separate paintings of objects that don't combine together into one thing because there is a very huge like range of contrast, range of brightness everywhere and really when you bring all that range into one view the light and shadow difference of each object on this landscape really becomes so low contrast that you shouldn't really pay attention to it otherwise everything will be too bright and too dark in some areas and nothing will really stand out it will look flat and weird there's actually a lot of sense in what I just said but I'm not sure that I was clear enough Let's move on. Let's add more details. I really like how I added this cloud shadow right here because I'll be able to, again, grab the color and add some kind of maybe forest silhouette right here. Only it's gonna be tinier because it's already a greater distance. And this is, by the way, something that I still mess up a lot. It's kind of the scale factor, like really thinking about the perspective in this kind of environment where this is a landscape with nothing hard surface in it. So you're not really obligated to use any kind of vanishing points or anything like that And because of that you may fail to keep in mind how really big or small things are supposed to be in like this spot Or in this spot how really bigger it should get so I really should analyze that and think that through I can draw like a flat grid like this to help me out, you know? That would serve as a guide to really help me keep in mind where things, like some kind of detail will be like this, in here it will have to be like this at least. So that's a great way to help yourself with drawing this kind of landscapes. So maybe I'll do that, we'll see. Right now I just wanna go through this thing and detail it for a little while, and then we'll move on. Alright, so here we go. It's been about an hour of work or something like that. Well, this is just a lovely progress. The field still needs a lot of work, obviously, but I think I added some sense into it. I created the grid like this and actually used the transformation tools to put it into the plane of the ground. Yeah, I think it's much closer to the final result now. Not there yet, but again, that wasn't the plan. I really like how the area over here really became 
became much more filled with details same as on the left and the soil in the foreground also doesn't lack all that much of details as it used to well this is just great so yeah as you can see I keep using Art Studio Pro definitely my software of choice at the moment I really love the brush engine and the fact that it's really really fast also another thing that is a bit unexpected but it's actually a huge deal especially for working with a book is the ability to show your gallery like this with the folders and quick access to all the documents in your app. This way it's really important to have it in such a nice presentation. And also being able to have several documents open at the same time kind of makes it a bit faster as well. Really cool. So there's been an update since the last time we talked about this. There is a huge improvement in this uh, full screen mode, although it's not really a full screen not a lot of stuff really disappears it just changes so we have nice brush size changes right here which is new it wasn't here before and for the flow kind of resembles of these bars in procreate so yeah really cool update undo redo in the top left corner also really nice quick selection of the brush you pretty much have almost everything you need in here which is awesome of course I could really use a constantly present color box on the screen but I believe that's in development actually another awesome improvement in this new version is actually a filter called elastify literally an equivalent of liquify from Photoshop and what I was surprised by is the fact how it's actually awesome you know the first version of liquify always sucks in any program in here it's super fast it works really well no glitches whatsoever it just works there are different kinds of modes as well and everything and it's it all works like it's really thought through. Of course, I myself never use Liquify, except for the times when I do. So yeah, I'm afraid we're actually out of time already. Maybe we'll work a little bit on the on this next page right here to detail it a bit more for the next 15 minutes or so. But mostly we're done for today. Maybe I'll move my work process to bed. That's something I've been practicing a little bit. One thing I really have to still get used to with iPad is how it's actually more comfortable than any kind of on-table tablet. Like when I need to draw something at a weird angle, I can actually like move it around. That's a big thing. You should get used to the fact that it's really light and easy to move around. Okay, I guess this is it for today. Added some stronger shadows in the deepest ambient areas of the flowers. Looks nice. Worked a little bit on the geometry of Gilbert and that's about it. I'm really trying to just not stick to one page but jump back and forth between them. Really seems like a much more comfortable approach for me anyway. Really recommending our Studio Pro. First because this is a really unexpectedly awesome program and secondly because I think without my recommendation is gonna be really hard for you guys to stumble upon it. I don't know why, maybe because they rewrote it from scratch before it was just Art Studio. It's still available on App Store, but don't get that one, get Art Studio Pro. This is a new version that they wrote completely from scratch when this whole metal graphic library appeared and Apple Pencil. So this Art Studio Pro app is actually just two years old. And this is really awesome that they decided to rewrite the whole app. It it really turned out amazing I think the most comfortable brush engine to work with while also having a really fast app this is like the best choice for me at least for my art style and so on and so forth and updates just keep coming there's been two updates actually since the last time I posted a video about it so yeah hopefully this will continue this way and there will be a lot more awesome updates and you guys will really appreciate it not an advertisement just a big fan so yeah, this is it for today. Hope you liked my little taste of working on this big book commission. I don't always use iPad for that. I have this whole gallery of pages for the Atlantic Curiosity in Adobe Bridge on my desktop. So I use Photoshop to work on the pages as well. But lately I found that with this comfortable brush engine, with the fact that I can set up brushes really comfortably, really close to the way Photoshop works, pretty much identically actually, it really helps to work even with the 
this whole situation with the absence of the hovering cursor with Apple Pencil, the fact that I can't really use custom keyboard shortcuts in R Studio Pro. I haven't used the keyboard at all today because this is not that kind of a process where you really need it, although it would make me kind of a lot faster, but it's actually something that I've been talking about a lot before that sometimes to actually work faster, you should work slower but smarter. Like, it's not necessary to make strokes really quickly, it's more about how you make them more correctly so you don't have to repaint and fix the same areas of the painting all the time. So in that sense, iPad kind of makes you tone down your pace of work and think more about what you're actually doing. Maybe there's some potential in that sense, but still could really use custom keyboard shortcuts, could really use a hovering cursor. Those two things would be awesome to have. But yeah, aside from that, I've already done some pretty decent work on it for the book. We'll keep doing it, we'll keep experimenting and trying to see how iPad can actually be used really well. It's all in the software at this point, because we can't really change hardware. I think we can work around all the nuances and make it just right for the professional use. So yeah, on that note, I thank you for watching if you did, I guess you did if you're here, leave a like and subscribe, tell a friend, take sleeping pills before bed every night and then wonder why you're so sleepy all day long, do whatever you want, and I will see you in the next one, bye! Bye! What a jumpy couch!